Hey there, how you doing? My name is Dylan Gallagher, founder of emilynow.ca with another piece of content to try and help you if you're an entrepreneur or business owner and you're looking to do more with your business. Our whole MO is that we know that at some point every business is going to need access to capital. Maybe they don't need it today, but they might need it in the future and they most times uh, need help with someone kind of guiding their efforts and showing them how to get through the process or what their options are or why their company's not performing the way it should. So we prepare these pieces of content to try and help you out a little bit. And the topic I wanted to discuss today is a result of a conversation I had with a good friend of mine who runs a business who's known me for, I think like 10 years, maybe 15 years. And he said, Dylan, you know, I don't know why you guys try to give businesses capital because it seems to me that when the economy's bad that the last thing businesses should be doing is borrowing money. And so I thought I would clarify for him that, um, first of all, I appreciated his opinion because oftentimes you don't know what people think of you until they tell you. But I never realized that he kind of struggled with this over the last decade, didn't really understand um, you know, why businesses would borrow capital or why that would ever be a good idea if they were struggling. And so what I shared with him is something I'm going to share with you, which is um, that every business has a cost of capital, meaning even if you don't have a loan or you haven't borrowed money from a bank, it doesn't mean that it's costing you zero to run your business or to access the resources that your business needs. And here's the, the kind of the classic case. A business owner or someone running a business or an entrepreneur will say to me, 2% a month, I can't pay 2% a month to take advantage of an opportunity or to fix a problem in our business because that just seems ridiculous. We just, we would never ever pay that. And they almost seem insulted when I tell them what the cost of capital could be. Until I ask them, well, let's look at your balance sheet. Let's look at your accounts payable and let's drill down a little bit more than that. Let's look at your accounts payable over 30, 60, and 90 days. And let's see how much money your business has outstanding with vendors in each of those time slots. Well, we pull that up and they say, so, so I, you know, I owe some vendors uh, past 30 days and 60 days and 90 days. And then I say, okay, well, let's pull up one of the invoices to one of those vendors and let's see what your cost of doing business is. And sure enough, in fine print on the bottom of any invoice that's outstanding, it says interest is being charged at 1.5%, 2%, 3%, 5%, doesn't really matter. The point is that your accounts payable is generating a cost for you. And you don't really notice it because it just shows up um, as you know normal course of business. But when a business freaks out about maybe borrowing money at 1% a month to pay off payables that are being built up at 2% a month, it's pretty simple math and you can kind of see how that would make sense. But many businesses don't really think like that. And so as I was explaining this to my good friend, he started to understand what I was talking about. There are times uh, in his business where they have, a, you know, they've generated large accounts payable that they weren't able to pay on time within 30 days and so they were paying interest. And then the next thing that I brought to his attention was that many small and medium sized businesses oftentimes have GST and income tax or payroll tax outstanding to the government. Well, the government doesn't carry that balance for a business at zero. They charge interest on that money and that interest can be three to 4% per month, 2%, 3%, can be higher than that. So even if as a business owner you get bent out of shape because you think that taking advantage of capital is too expensive and doesn't make any sense, that might be true, but not if your balance sheet is a mess and you owe your vendors money, including the government, because both your vendors and the government aren't letting you use their money, which is in essence what that is, they're not letting you use their money for free. There is a cost to it. So if all of a sudden this has got you thinking, hmm, maybe I should look at my balance sheet. Maybe I should see if what Dylan's talking about is true. And if you need some help with that, get in touch with us. Go to emilynow.ca. 
We've got a couple different plans that you can pick from that can that can be used to figure out how we can help your business because oftentimes getting money is not just about getting money. A lot of times there's other work involved in terms of helping you understand some of the things that we've just discussed here today. But understand that there is a cost associated with running your business and in particular there is a cost associated with using money in your business and that money might be in the form of unpaid payables that money might be in the form of unpaid remittances to the government but your business needs money to survive it needs money to function and don't fool yourself if you think that the money that your business is using is a zero cost if it is good for you I'm I'm genuinely happy for you because that's the, the goal that every business should get to, where their cost of capital is as low as it can be. And when I say cost of capital, not necessarily the money they've borrowed, but their payables and the people that they owe money to is non-existent. All the bills are being paid within 30 days, materials, labor, all of that is being taken care of. That's great. That's an excellent business. Many businesses don't find themselves in that position though. They do find themselves in a spot where they have outstanding payables greater than their receivables. They tend to owe the government some sort of remittance amount and they're just not sure how to do that. Get in touch with us, we can help you figure that out. We can help you figure out how much money that is, how to get it, and, and how to incorporate it into your business plan so that ultimately it doesn't become a cost of doing business that you can, can get a return on it. So anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Really, really excited that um, you're able to join us on this piece of content. I uh, would encourage you to reach out to us, send us an email, uh, jump into your Emily Now account. If you don't have one, sign up for our green membership plan. It doesn't cost you anything, but you get access to lots of different resources that can help you if you're an entrepreneur or business owner. And we look forward to hearing from you one day. Mm -hmm.